As you can see here, we get an enhancement of lighting even in areas where the original render did not show particular shades of light. We can do this using normals and clay render maps. Let's see how. Corona Lighting Tutorial In the previous video, we saw how to manually improve the chiaroscuro by painting the faces of objects in accordance with the direction of light. But there's a faster way to accomplish the same operation, there are actually two, using normals and clay render, that's my preferred method and definitely the most photorealistic. But let's start with the normals. First of all, what are these maps? A normal map looks like this, and it's a data map that uses the R, G and B channels of an image to store information about the orientation of the faces within the scene. If we open this map in Photoshop, activate the channel window and look at various channels, we notice that they are all different. In the red channel we'll have all the gradients along the x-axis, in the green channel all those along the y-axis and in the blue channel all gradients running along the z-axis. And since in this scene we have a primary natural light going from right to left, the channel that the best help us emphasize this direction is precisely the Y channel. In fact, as you can see, all the faces facing completely to the right are white and gradually turn grey to black when faces completely to the left. And it's precisely these dark areas that we will exploit to amplify the shadows. That's why this is the appropriate map for our case. Now, to turn the green channel alone into a normal layer, we need to do a couple of steps. First, we select it, then Ctrl A, Ctrl C, and finally we create a new layer, and with the Ctrl V, we paste the green channel, that is one related to the gradients along the Y axis, to a black and white layer. So we set it to overlay. The overlay blending method blends with the underlying image enhancing both lighter and darker tones. Now to remove the brighter areas and leave only the shadows, we can use the blend if function of Photoshop layer. I just turn off the layer render to better show you how it works. To remove the light component, just move this slider to the left. Now as you can see, the split is so sharp, so while holding down ALT key, let's click precisely on this slider to split it in two and get a blurred the transition. Now I turn on the render layer and we see now that we only have the shadows in evidence. Of course, it won't be perfect right away. We can observe that some areas darken without this being necessary, so let's Activate a mask and hide the shadows we don't need. To complete, we reduce the opacity to make sure that the retouching is not too extreme, otherwise, we run the risk of losing the balance that is the basis of photorealism. Getting the normal image for any render is super easy. Just go into the render elements and select normal shading. But if by chance you have already rendered and only need this element, I suggest you first activate render only masks and then launch the render. Corona won't do any calculation on lights and materials, so it will only produce the render element in a few seconds. But my favorite method that also preserves more for the realism uses clay renders. In this case, however, it means producing an extra image, which is a small disadvantage, but it creates a great effect. Here we have the final render and its clay render, in which we see all shades of grey except on materials made of glass. We set overlay and eliminate brighter tones, taking advantage of gradients as seen before.
Here again, we don't leave anything to chance, but always use a photographic eye to see where we need this effect. By turning the layer on and off, we observe if we lose contrast in some areas. For example, on this sofa or under the marble, under the table, we lose contrast, so we create a mask and paint these areas black to hide them. Finally, we reduce the opacity, so as not to alter the original image too much. As you can see, we get the enhancement of lighting even in areas where the original renderer did not show particular shades of light. Finally, clay render can also be used as a technique to recover areas whose details have been completely lost, for example, burned area like in this case. As we can see in the clay render, here we have a perfect chiaroscuro that we can exploit to regenerate the shadows. This time we'll use a multiply method and paint white on negative mask to reveal only this area that I'm interested in. With a little creativity and study, you can modify and adapt these techniques in many different ways. The important thing is always to maintain a photographic vision. And if you like my approach, check out my official course where you can learn how to approach and resolve these and many other issues with a photographer's eye.